the fight of, against corruption, which I think remains one of the most consequential fights that this country must sustain to be able to survive in the long run, for the country to survive in the long run. I would have thought that, for example, the measures taken by the government to increase transparency and track the money that the government collects from the people of Kenya is a bold step towards enhancing uh, transparency and improving the fight against corruption. Because that way, the next thing now to be asked, or we should be asking, is how that money is being used for the benefit of the people of Kenya. The media is a powerful instrument for advocacy and education of the masses. With its tentacles in almost every homestead, the media shapes not only the opinions, but also the beliefs of citizens. The relationship between government and the media has often been strained and marked by distrust, tension, and adversarial interactions. The media has been cited for advancing political and partisan interests sometimes, at the expense of its core mandate of being the public watchdog. It has been blamed, maybe fairly, maybe unfairly, for the deterioration of public values through the glorification of immorality, immorality vanity, and morbidity in pursuit, in pursuit of the almighty shilling. On the other hand, government has been accused of frustrating the media due to its public publicization and profiling of EUs in society. Government has been accused of seeking to control coverage through coercion and intimidation. Government has been accused of failing to protect media freedom and the personal safety of journalists. We must bridge this divide and build a working partnership grounded on accountability and responsibility. Today, media houses are struggling to compete with non-traditional peers where integrity and standards cannot be assured. The transition to digital platforms has meant a reorientation and a recalibration, often time at great cost. It is not lost on all of us that the evolution of a technologically driven world order now has the media fraternity as one of its many victims, if not casualty. The exercise of media freedom as guaranteed by the Constitution should be of necessity, be tampered with a sense of responsibility, as I have said, and accountability. It is more common today to find single perspectives, barely tempered by a right of reply about perceived government action or inaction. Indeed, it is not uncommon to see small insert apologies, often a few days after a sensational story has been published, seeking to apologize and clarify positions. And only after a victim has, been, has called the media out for its misreporting by which time the credibility of the victim is in shambles. Journalists must uphold a high level of professionalism that is founded on professional standards. We believe in the freedom of the media. We endeavor to protect it. Our constitution has guaranteed these freedoms. And you expect it in a society, occasionally there will be infractions. The problem is when we do not address those infractions as we are required. And therefore, I want to commit for the journalist who was uh, hurt. I will be following up on where we are, and I want to undertake, uh, Madam President and the rest of the colleagues here, that we are going to follow up to ensure justice is done and establish who did this and bring that person to account. The advent of the internet and the rapid growth of digital technology have rev revolutionized how we consume information and entertainment. It is therefore imperative that we all adapt or perish. The need for media actors to innovate 
is now. You must embrace digital platforms, diversify your content, and build on collaborations and partnerships outside the beaten path.